All right, part two on this uh, TRX 450R. Uh, this is where we left off. You guys remember, we got the top end off. Uh, the crank is frozen solid. You can't get anything to move here. Um, if you guys want to see the progress um, and catch up where we left off, check out the first video in this series. Uh, at this point here, um, we'll go over something that I did off camera, which was this front engine bolt here. It was um, uh, rusted solid to the bushing that goes between uh, the frame mount and the um, motor mount. Well, I should say the casting. And I had to heat it with a torch, move it back and forth. I finally got it free. The swing arm bolt, this thing is not moving at all. It's not budging. It's rusted on there solid. I'm not really sure. Uh, how we're gonna get this thing off um, I unbolted the shock and I am just gonna heat the bejesus out of that and um, See if it seems to me like when I pull down on this The swing arm is moving pretty freely um, Let's see if I can pick it up I mean it's moving pretty freely So if it's frozen, it's frozen inside these two bushings here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat them with a torch and um, that's about all I can do. I'll have to get a uh, swing on rebuild kit for this because I'm probably going to burn up the seals. But um, if, I can't get, if I can't get it off that way, then I'm going to take a sawzall and I'm just going to cut the cases off right here to get the motor out. And then I'll continue to see if I can get the swing, swing on bolt out. Um, I want to try to avoid cutting the cases at this point. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to eventually. Uh, not eventually, but if I have to eventually, it's uh, not a big deal because I have to replace them anyway. Um, so let, let me heat these things up and um, see where we can go from there. Okay, so what I have is uh, down here, there was rubber plugs covering these two cavities right here. And I popped them off because they started. Let me see if I can get you a little closer. I don't even know. Let me try over here. There you go. Um, those two holes there had rubber plugs over them. I took them out because they started the, the torch started to melt them a little bit, but I don't want to ruin them, so I took them out. Um, I was spinning the nut with my large impact gun, and I noticed that these collars are frozen onto that. Um, axle axle bolt. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna just keep heating and heating and heating until I get it off. All right, I tried heat. It's not budging. Um, I put my breaker bar in there with a uh, with a pipe, and this is the result. Broke my breaker bar. So I'm pretty much done fooling around with this. Uh, I'm gonna take. My sawzall and I'm just gonna cut that lug off the back of the case and then um, I'll go in there with a die grinder and cut it out I was thinking about just cutting through the bolt but those spaces are hard to steal and uh, saw blades not gonna go through that a grinding wheel will but a saw blade will not so let me set you up in a stand and you guys can watch the show All right, I think we got it. I'm gonna just try to snap these cases off right now. See if I can do it with a big pry bar. Because I ain't playing games. There we go. Oh. There you have it. Saw it right through it. You see that piece is still there. All right, the motor's out. Uh, aluminum cut's pretty easy. I mean, I did, did shave a little bit off of the swing arm there, but she'll be fine. Um, 
All right, I'm gonna get the die grinder out and I'm going to uh, cut those and get that out of there and see if I can't get the bolt out of the swing arm. All right, let's grind these out. I got my safety glasses on, always safety first. Oh, one side's out. Boy, was that thing in there. You can see it right there. You can see the two pieces, how that collar has just welded itself right onto the uh, axle shaft or swing arm shaft or bolt, whatever you want to call it. Unbelievable. You can see it. That ain't never coming off of there. All right, let's see if I can get the other one out. All right, I'm going to grab my drive pin and try to pound that thing out. Wow, she is not moving. I think I'm gonna have to get the grinder out, grind it flush to this, and then maybe I can pound it out. I'm gonna do that now. Okay, I cut it off. Let's see if I can pound it out now. I mean, I've really done a hack job with some of this stuff, but what am I gonna do? While I was recording, I ran out of memory on my memory card, so it stopped recording while I was grinding. Um, so I don't, I didn't really have uh, take getting this part out. But basically, what I did was I ground the head off, and then I just pounded it out this way with a dry pin and a hammer, and it came out this way. And uh, oh, let me grab that. So this is it right here, um, and we got it out. This was not fun to do, it was not easy. And again, I understand why previous owner just, just didn't want to deal with it. Uh, this was a lot of work. You can see that I nicked this pretty good, but it's not gonna affect anything because if you look down inside there, you can see that the uh, needle barons are actually on this side of the swing arm. This side here is just um, basically clearance. And um, the... Uh, Collars, this seal keeps the dirt from going inside there. So basically, all this part of the uh, swing arm does right here is just hold that seal. And I didn't break into the seal area or anything like that. So structurally, this is not going to do anything to the functionality of that swing arm. All right, so I think what I'm going to do now is I'm not going to record any of it. I am going to pull the skid plate off and I'm going to pull off this skid plate. I think what I'm going to do is this is a vent for the. Um, for the lower case of the engine. And um, it looks like maybe once in a while oil comes out of it. I'm gonna put a hole in this bottom skid plate so that if it does leak oil, it can come out and go on the ground rather than pulling up and building up in there. Um, I'll do that after. I'll just take a hole saw and put a hole in that where that is. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this off, I'm gonna clean up the whole frame and then I'm going to um, take the brakes off the rear swing arm, take the tires off and I'm gonna pull the swing arm out and get ready to rebuild the pivot point here. Uh, I have the kit on order. Engine's on the bench. Let's take a look at that. So that's where I sawed it off. And uh, as you can see over here, I did hit the side cover a little bit here with um, the uh, 
Sawzall. Not a big deal. It didn't break through or anything. I'll polish that out. You won't even see it. Um, let's take a look at uh, the other parts that I cut off. So here's a piece of the um, engine case that was down uh, on top of the uh, skid plate. And that's a piece that got blown out when the crank let go. This is a piece of that um, spacer that I had to cut. This is one side of the axle bolt, I uh, shouldn't say axle bolt, the um, swing arm bolt. And you can see that the um, spacer sleeve is just welded itself with rust. And um, I wasn't getting this out. I just, there's no way I could have got proper heat to it. Um, and it just, it just wasn't gonna let go. And this is the part that rides on the barons that are inside the swing arm. And uh, they ride right here. You can see it, they're pretty corroded. So we need to rebuild the uh, swing arm pivot as well. Here's the other side. This side wasn't too bad. Um, it wasn't as corroded with a barons ride, uh, but it's pretty bad. And again, this was not coming off. So I had to cut the head, the uh, head, head off the bolt. Uh, and push it through the other way because the sleeve was not coming off the bolt itself. And here's the piece of the the back end of the engine cases that I had to cut off. I don't know if I'll be able to get it apart. Let's see. Ah, seems like it's coming. There we go. Yeah, you can see how much corrosion is in there. Cleaned it up pretty good. Um, I was going to take the skid plates off, but unfortunately, it is held on by Phillips heads. I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can find one. There's one right there. And they're not coming off. I don't want to damage anything else on this bike, like by grinding those off and damaging the, the, the slowest skid plate here is plastic. I don't want to damage it, melt it. Um, I want to try to minimize the pots that I have to buy for this because I'm already uh, spending quite a bit of money on this bike. So I cleaned it up pretty good, as you can see. I will clean it one more time before I put the engine back in there. But at this point here, what I'm gonna do, I won't record it, but I'm gonna take the, um, the mounts for the um, brake line off the swing arm. I am going to remove the caliper from the swing arm. I'm gonna take the two tires off, and then I'm gonna take the swing arm off the bike, and we are going to remove those needle barons. Tried to get the wheels off, and uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but these stupid pointy lug nuts here. Um, you go on the other side, you can probably see it better. These pointy lug nuts here take a special socket. Uh, yeah, the the, uh, the hex isn't really a hex. It's like uh, some. It's weird. It's uh, I don't have a socket to fit it. It's hard for me to explain. But instead of there being two parallel surfaces on either side, it's parallel here and pointed here. So it clearly takes a special socket, which I don't have. So I'm gonna change gears a little bit and rather than taking the axle off the, off the rack, um, just gonna work on it on here. I'll try to get the barons out while it's on here. And if you guys could take a look in there, those needle barons are toast and they need to be replaced. This side here doesn't look too bad. It's rusty, but it isn't as bad as this side. So we're going to, uh, and it looks like the um, space is missing on this side too. I don't see it, it's not here. On this side, you'll see. See, there's a spacer there. The other side's missing. Hopefully that comes in the rebuild kit. All right, uh, let me get you set up at a stand and um, we'll try to pull these barons out. Put my uh, blind baron puller in here and see if I can't get this thing out. Put the 
slide hammer on. Hopefully this will work. We'll see. Coming out. There it is. We got it out. All right, I'm going to go do the other side. Everything's all cleaned up. Uh, let's see, the swing arm's all cleaned up. Looks good, nice and clean. I uh, scrubbed it all, cleaned it with degreaser. Um, the pivot holes, you can see inside there, they're nice and clean. This one here as well, nice and clean. Swing arm up here is all clean. Cleaned all the grime and guck out of the um, Skid plate, the rear caliper is all nice and clean. And what I did with this was I just wire wheeled it and it gets all the grime off and it actually makes it look pretty good. Um, I didn't wire wheel the caliper itself. I just cleaned it with degreaser real good, cleaned it all up. That's all ready to go. Um, I took it off and I realized that, of course, you guys can see that. Not much left of those brake pads, is there? So we'll add that to the ever-growing list of parts that we need. Um, so I'm not, I can't put the caliper back on until I get the brake pads. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to concentrate on the frame, get the frame and suspension done, and uh, then we'll go and we'll break the motor down. So I think um, I got parts to order. I'm going to order the swing arm kit for the um, bearings and the bushings. And we're going to, um, it'll come with seals, it'll come with the spaces, it'll come with all that stuff. I'm going to order a set of rear pads. And um, I got I to gotta get a new um, swing on bolt and all that. So I'll get all that in order. I'll get that here. And then um, there's a few other things that I'm, that, I'm, that I'm looking to order right now. I know I need case halves. So I've been looking for case halves. Uh, I'm trying to find the cheapest case halves I can find. I don't want to spend... The seven hundred dollars it's going to cost to buy uh, the left and the right. Um, you can see there how nice that is. That's really clean. Um, there's no corrosion in there, so the swing arm will be fine once we get it back together. And over here, you can see uh, my little gaff there, where I hit that with the uh, sawzall. I hit it with a file, some sandpaper, and then a wire wheel, and you can't even tell. Like I said, there's still a lot of meat on there, and all this area right here is for is to hold the seal anyway, so it's fine. All the um, working part is this, this thicker piece right here. So we're good. No, no issues there. Again, everything's nice and clean. Uh, the frame is clean. I'm not sure if this had a black frame or if someone painted it. I really don't know. Um, if they painted it, they did a pretty good job because they literally, I mean, even behind where the um, foot pegs were, all this stuff, it's all painted. 
I don't see any of that usual, you know, this color here, that Honda gray. Um, the only thing that makes me think is where the VIN number was, is, is uh, it looked like it was taped off. But whoever did it, you know, took the time and disassembled the whole bike because there's no paint on any of the nuts and bolts, even back here. So I'm assuming that whoever did it, did it right. Uh, and it doesn't look too bad. I think if I hit it with some uh, tire bright or something like that, uh, the frame will pop again. So I'm not really worried about doing anything with that. That'll be fine. I think I am going to touch up the A-arms in the front. I do have some of that Honda Silver. So I'm going to touch those up. Hit them with some sandpaper. Touch them up so they look good. Um, other than that, we got some uh, wire wheeling to do back here still, which I'll do later. I don't know what I'm going to do about the lug nuts on these tires because I can't get them off. I got to figure it out. See if I can find out where I can get... Uh, the socket to take those off. The front shouldn't be bad. I could probably get them with a pair of vice grips. But the back and the other is another story. I, I'm going to need a socket to get in there. So I'm going to do some research to see if I can find one. If not, I'm just going to leave them. Uh, I'll touch them up because uh, I'm flipping the bike anyway. With the next, uh, I'll let the next person that buys it know that they need to find that socket. So uh, moving forward, we're going to uh, replace the headlight. I got a Cool idea what I want to do here because I don't want to spend $200 or $150 for that Honda factory headlight. I think it's kind of ugly anyway. Um, I did pick up a taillight for $10 on eBay. I think it's a China made one and I'm going to replace the taillight with that. Um, I'll probably have to make up some kind of a mount to go across here because um, it's a little bit shorter. But it's a smoked, smoked um, black one. I was going to put it on my um, Kawasaki. Because my Kawasaki has a clear plastic tail light on it. And I don't know if I really like the way that looks. But um, I don't really feel like taking the one, that one off that bike. So I'm just going to pop it on this one. Not, not a big deal. Um, other than that, I think we're good to go. Uh, so I'm going to um, I'm gonna end this video too now. And um, I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank the subscribers. I want to thank um, all the people commenting. It's been a great help moving forward keep doing it because uh it helps and uh this guy right here which i found out is actually it has two plugs and it's um grip warmers so somebody put grip warmers on here at one time and it is not a tuna but i don't see any wires going up to the grips and these are uh these are atv grips so uh the grip part of it's long gone but the controller part's here and i'll end up taking that off and getting rid of it so once again, this is the end of video two, and uh, I look forward to uh, video three, where we start doing some more um, engine work. But uh, at this point here, I am going to end this video, and I want to thank everyone for watching.